Welcome to the third episode of Dauber's Draftcast. We decided to do a quick draft for everyone, highlighting the big moves of the trade deadline and giving you our winners and, lose- and losers. As always, I am your host, Pat Quinn, Associate Editor of Dauber Prospect, and here is Kyle Watson, Junior Editor and Co-host, who also posts fantastic interview clips all the time. Happy to be uh, on, happy to be back. Yeah, well, you're the co-host, so you're forced to be back. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, everyone on YouTube, like and subscribe, and you can listen to us on Anchor, Spotify, Apple iTunes, and Google Podcasts. Even though I was having trouble with the last one on Google Podcasts, um, we're powered by it. And yeah, again, in case anyone missed the last one, oh, we have two episodes so far. This is episode number three. The first episode, we went over some draft prospects. Last one was a bit of some trades that went on and our Calder candidates. Mine were obviously the right ones, and Kyle's were the wrong ones. And we both have both cider <laughs> yeah, as the uh, winner. Spoilers. <laughs> For <laughs> the episode's already out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, um, yeah, I guess we can pretty much get into this one. What we're going to do today, uh, we might be joined by someone later. Maybe, maybe not. So you might get a surprise. Um, yeah, I already said what we're going to do today, so... I guess we can get started. But anyone on YouTube, if you can figure out where this is from, I haven't got a Twitter message about it. Um, you can win a free Dauber Prospects Fantasy Prospect Guide, the one that comes out in the future, not like the one that's three years old. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, so let's get right into the bigger trades. Uh, we'll start with Tampa Bay, apparently thinking they were going to get Patrick Kane, but decided to get Brandon Hagel instead. Um, with two fours for a 2023 first, a 2024 first. Boris Kachuk. That's how I think you're supposed to say it. Or it's like Kachuk. No, because I think it's anyway. And, and Taylor Radish. Um, what do we think about that? Uh, wow. Well, a couple of elite last names uh, on their way to the Blackhawks, first of all. But um, it, it, it's a bit over and over overpayment for sure. I mean, Hagel is someone that's what, what is he shooting like 22%? He's having a breakout year. So they're kind of paying for that hype, but I, I still think he'll be an excellent addition um, to their bottom six. Uh, I think they're clearly with the moves they made, trying to reassemble their kind of checking line that they had with uh, Coleman and Goodrow and Gord. So um I really think it's an overpayment, but like when you're the Tampa Bay Lightning and you have this, you've won two Stanley Cups in a row looking for a third and you only have a couple more years left of this core where you're going to be able to keep them all under contract. I think it's a totally fine move. And I think it's a pretty solid move um, for Chicago. Although if Brandon Hagel, 23 years old, is not part of your rebuild, I'm not really sure who is, but if, you, if they're really trying to like rip things apart and, and, you know, just build from the ground up with 18, 19, 20 year olds, then this is a pretty solid move for them. I'd say. Well, it almost feels like a deal you can't say no to. Yeah. Especially if like Radish can just do what Hagel does in two years. then basically you just got three extra assets just for one player who, like you said, is uh, kind of shooting to the moon right now. But uh, Dauber usually points wherever he goes, he overproduces. So Tampa probably knows that and probably has something involved there, but they also could have got him for free, I think a year or two ago. So this is also really good asset management by Chicago. But like you said, it just seems like an extra rebuild, even though this off season was supposed to not be a rebuild. Yeah. They, they've also what, like gone from Stanley cup winners to, okay, we're going to go through a rebuild to just kidding. We're going to sign Seth Jones <laughs> for eight years or nine years back to the rebuild. So yeah. it's, it's, we've talked about this before with other teams, but it's like, you, you got to pick a lane. Otherwise you're going to end up in limbo. Like what the Minnesota wild have been for the past 10 years where you're just in the race, but you're not really at the top of it. So I don't know if, if I'm Chicago, I'm definitely on the on the side of a full rebuild, but I like I would not have signed Seth Jones and I don't think many people <laughs> would have. But um, yeah, uh, it, it's interesting to me that like the it's a 2023 and a 2024 first. Like I know that the 2023 NHL draft is crazy hyped up, but we're already looking towards 2024. Like I, I, I don't know if I've seen a draft pick traded two years in advance like a first. Yeah, they, while, anyway. Tampa also has their 2022 first still, so that's um pretty surprising. But like we discussed on the last draft cast, no one apparently really appreciates this draft and they all want to be in the next draft. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, if 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 you're going to be picking in in the like 25 to 30, then next year is probably a better class. But yeah, no, no love for 2022 this yeah. year at all, and at the trade deadline. Yeah, and Tampa then quickly made a little quick move of trading Matthew Joseph for Nick Paul. All players involved actually have four. So that was my favorite part of the trade. But I don't know. I For me, I think Tampa loses this one because I just like Matthew Joseph much more than Nick Paul. But Paul sort of fits that bottom six role. But, like, Joseph's just so fast and such a good penalty killer. I didn't really understand this one. But I mean, Paul fits the bottom six, but but did Joseph not fit the bottom six? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's a great defensive forward, great four checker. Yeah. It um, it just seems like a, like a tactical move from Tampa in that they wanted to go for someone – bigger and and less of a you know like a someone who is more defensive through their stick work like like joseph but so i don't know it, it definitely is like uh there definitely is some things they could point to at this trade deadline if tampa doesn't win the cup that, that are gonna look bad but i don't know it just seems like again like last year where they they look like they overpaid for savar they look like they overpaid for coleman and they won a cup so they're never gonna complain so it's uh these are trades that I think only time will tell um you know who's the winner. Yeah, if they get another cup, what can we say, right? Yeah, uh, which I think is likely. Yeah, like, it could be, but I don't know. The East, like I, I think I saw Adam Gretz on Twitter. I don't remember how to say his name, but he was basically saying in the East, like is there any matchup that you would consider an upset? Like before the line in Florida getting Giroux, I Florida is the only team I could really see being upset. But like, I can't. If Washington finished eight and played Florida and like Washington won, you're like, well, Washington's a good team. Yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> and it's kind of true in the West too, with like Vegas in the wild card spot, but yeah. less so. But less yeah. so if you watch them play right now. But. <laughs> True, but I just mean like you're never going to count that team out on paper if yeah. they get there. Um, if they get Stone and Patch already back. I I just mean like with with why I think Tampa are like my favorites, even though a three peats like impossible, is because like as good as Colorado is, you know they haven't really proven themselves yet with this group. And then are you like in Florida and Calgary teams like that have been terrific, Toronto, but similar kind of situation where when's the last time they really went on a deep run? Yeah. Although although Florida was kind of dealt a bad hand having to play Tampa last year in the first round. But that that playoffs that was my favorite round of the playoffs. That one was nuts. I loved watching that. Yeah, I guess we can't stick on Tampa forever. So let's go to the next one of Boston acquiring Tampa's Lindholm, who they then signed for eight years at six point five mil, even though he's twenty-nine. Um, and Cody Curran for a twenty twenty two first. Well, there's some love for twenty twenty two. Um, a 2023 second, a 2024 second, Yurho Vakaninen, Vakaninen, um, who was a past first round pick of them, and John Moore's contract. Yeah, I, yeah, you go for this one again, Kyle. What's your analysis here? I can give mine right. Now, don't worry. I just think you know it's 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 a good move. I think Lindholm was one of the better defenders available. Um, I think. What really bothers me is just the fact that they signed him for so long. I think Boston kind of had an opportunity this year and in the summer to really extend their cup window with guys like Pasternak, McAvoy, Swayman, DeBrusque, um, who they re-signed for two more years. Um, but they, with this move, they're kind of saying, like, if we're going to win, it's going to be with Barge, Bergeron, Marchard, and, sorry, Bergeron and Marchand, and kind of <laughs> the older guys. Um, I just think there's no way – in even four to five years, let alone eight years, that a Hampus Lindholm is going to be worth that much. Um, although it could, you know, it could work out for them this year. I think their defense um, with guys like Mike Riley um, and uh, Charlie McAvoy is really strong. They're getting good goaltending. And of course, they've got the perfection line. So can't count them out. But I think it's not going to look great in a couple of years. Um, I mean, we know defenders kind of have a longer peak or they, they, they age a bit better. But like you said, he's 29. He's signed for eight years. I don't know. I don't know. If, was it was anyone else like fighting with them to sign him for eight <laughs> years? Like like who else was trying to offer Hampus Lindholm that much term? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm a big Hampus Lindholm fan, so um, I think he like Anaheim just kind of stunk the last two years, so it was really hard for him to look good. Even though you can still look good on a bad team, like that. But you know, sometimes when the defense isn't that great, you don't. Um, 
I think he can do a lot better in the system. I don't know really what else to say, except for a little tidbit that Cody Curran was um, a University of Calgary alumni, and um, Anaheim signed him to, like, I think it was a $2 million year deal that was one way out of um, Europe, which kind of went under the radar, and they, like, never used him. So I didn't really understand that one. Um, huh. Do we think uh, Euro Vakaninen, Vakaninen? I'm going to get it right if I just keep saying different ways to say it 600 times. Um, do we think he can sort of turn it around in uh, Anaheim? Because that's a blue line he can actually make. Like, I want to see what he can do. I know he's been injured a lot, so that really hasn't helped him. Um, but he, it seems like Cassidy just didn't really want to use him and everything. He was 2018, right? I, I don't think I've heard much about him um, since draft. Yeah, he's looks like he spent most of his time in Providence, so... I don't know. I, I, I think I don't think he's really the centerpiece for Anaheim. It's probably the picks, but you know, with with the amount of young kids, yeah, and like you say, there's room for him. Things could work out for him, but yeah, I really haven't heard much about him since since he was picked. It, it was kind of a, I don't know if I'd say a reach, but it's uh, I don't know if it was the most uh, shrewd pick at eighteen. Well, he wasn't a bad pick. He was a first round pick for a lot of people. Not well, like I other mean, Boston um, first round picks that they usually take, like Trent Frederick or you know. I, I don't I don't understand what it was Boston. They hate first round picks. Like they just pick like the most bottom six player you can get, and then all of a sudden get amazing players later in the draft. I I don't understand how they do it, but they just keep doing it. The, the four people taken after him in 2017, Josh Norris, Robert Thomas, Philip Chatil, and Kyler Yamamoto. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> oh, it's like 2015 all over again. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> Almost. Um, all right. Uh, so then Florida made a big splash getting Claude Giroux really cheap. And for some reason, Florida also tossed in German. Well, I can never say his name right, but I'll just go with Rupsov and Connor Bunneman and a 2025 fifth for Owen Tippett and a 2024 first and a 2023 third because uh, I think Florida doesn't have these next two first round picks anyway. Um, I don't really understand throwing German in there. I'm going to call him German because I don't want to keep mispronouncing his last name. I don't understand throwing him in there, but maybe he's just not coming back to North America because I think he's in the KHL. But then Owen Tippett, I think people a lot of a lot of people are underrating him. Um, he's still a good power winger, and it's going to take him a while to sort of establish himself in size. But then at the same time, he is playing with Bennett Huberto in the NHL and not really producing much. But if he can get up the shot volume, up the power game, then that could be a player the Flyers usually love to have. Yeah, it, I mean, especially if Giroud doesn't sign in Florida, it's certainly looking like a nice haul. For Philadelphia, obviously, it's never easy to see a team legend like that go away. And it's it's kind of probably really upsetting for them, given that, you know, a year ago, we were looking at Philadelphia as, like, not necessarily a cup contender, but, like, they were in the playoffs, and then they've kind of just <laughs> had a tough year. So yeah. this is kind of the cherry on top for that. But I, I think they should be happy with Owen Tippett. Um, like you said, like, if he's not producing with one of the best playmakers in the world and, and Jonathan Huberto, will he? But... I don't know. This is what was he a seventh, eighth overall pick? Um, yeah. So something like that, top ten. But he's just he's a big player, and it I've takes. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, like I've definitely seen, seen flashes of brilliance from him this year. So, yeah. and he's doing really well in the AHL. So it's like he's too good for the AHL and just not quite good enough for the NHL. He's sort of in that sort of line, but I think on a team like philadelphia can be like all right well you got time to sort of play your game even though he goes to i think a right wing that also has like connect on it and atkinson so he's sort of buried right there but i don't know That's i don't true. mind too much also Giroux right now i saw on twitter um florida's gonna run because ekblad's out until playoffs florida's gonna run a rate as of right now a five forward power play and Giroux's on oh the my right God. there <laughs> i didn't Yikes. understand the deal 100 percent for Florida a bit like well obviously you're getting a top player to use him but him and Huberto play the exact same spot on the power play so I didn't know how that was going to work at all but I think it's your second one yeah I was going to say I think it's just a sense of he was probably the best player available yeah. and they wanted to get him because <laughs> they're cup contenders and they'll deal with where he'll fit in later 
yeah, just go all in for it now. Like a motto that Edmonton apparently or Ken Holland doesn't want to do, even though he has the two best players possibly. They went all in, man. They got Brett Kulak. <laughs> Their biggest issue, actually, the Kulak deal was a good one. Their yeah. biggest issue is the goaltending. And they're just like, no, I don't want to pay for a goalie. It's like, okay. Everyone Stop was yelling just, at Koskinen. <laughs> he came out and said, I'm comfortable with the goalies we have now. And everyone's just like, I'm bookmarking this for later. <laughs> like, it's going like, so bad, so quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then let's get into a leaf trade of Giordano and Colin Blackwell for a 2022 second, 2023 second, and a 2024 third. Um, this deal I really liked. I mean, Mark Giordano's 38, but I think Toronto needed some help on the back end. They probably needed more help on right handed defenders, but. Um, I mean, I'm sure Giordano can play on his offhand. And I think um, it wasn't initially, it didn't initially come out that Blackwell was involved. So I think, honestly, if you look at the deal and you look at it as a second for Giordano and like a second and a third for Blackwell, like this is a great move for Dubas. Um, I think it looks a lot better than the moves they made last year at this time. So, um, <laughs> like Felino. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a real fan of this. Um, I think Blackwell helps them out. Um, I don't think they, have a lot of forwards that can really play a shutdown role. Um, so I, I really like this deal for Toronto. Although, you know, I was saying to my roommate, like, is it really the deal that pushes them over past the first round? I'm not sure. Um, and it's just going to look bad again if, if they kind of collapse and, and spend a lot of assets on a guy who's 38. But I don't know. I think uh, out of context, it, it looks like a really good deal for them. Yeah. For me, what helps Toronto is they have tons of depth everywhere and I think they spend the money to scout properly. So they're fine with minimal picks. I do like Blackwell too. I think that's a good bottom uh, six sort of player. But I also think he could, like, um, under the right circumstances, you could probably stick him up with Taveras and Nylander on line too. And he could look pretty good there too. I think um, Geo's good too. I like him. Sorry. I was, gonna, I was just going to say, I think they'll, they'll be really happy that they didn't give away any of their prospects. Like, you know, uh, Amaroff, um, Yamila, they've got some really good prospects um, that are, like you said, like they, they draft well. These were guys they picked um, that are already kind of looking better than the position they were taken in. And so, they're, yeah, they're probably not too mad about the picks they've lost, given that they know they can recuperate and, and draft much higher than the position they're drafting and get some players that are way better than where they're picking. Yeah, they draft well post Hunter too, so that helps. <laughs> but they also got, I think Matthew Nyes is going to mm-hmm. turn pro this year from everything Leafs Twitter is saying. So that's that could nuts. Be a little depth ad for them. That's nuts. Yeah. How how often do you see a guy that went in the second round immediately make the jump the next year? Oh, uh, Ryan O'Reilly. He's been really. <laughs> yeah, he was Ryan in the second round and made the abs the next year. Ryan O'Reilly is a second round pick. Wow. Sorry? The Duchesne draft. That they oh, yeah. Duchesne third and then O'Reilly. That's crazy. I did yeah. not know that because he was pretty highly touted. I remember seeing him at the U-17s. They, they were oh, in London. And he slipped. It was, it was always a weird thing. Yeah, um, Gio, Gio's good. He helps the Leafs too. But like, uh, like you were saying, I don't really know if this pushes them over the top. Like they have still, I think, the top rate of power play, which of course in playoffs – it doesn't matter because no penalties really get called and you're allowed to maul um, the best players. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I hope it works out. Maybe they could get past round one, but likely they're going to have to play <laughs> Carolina, Florida, Tampa. So at least they don't have to play Boston this year. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like to say I, I'm, I'm not I'm not ripping on the Leafs. I really hope they make it past the first round. I think it's best for the sport, right, that we see Austin Matthews as far in the playoffs as we can. Um, but, yeah, I, I think goaltending would be the question, obviously. I can't yeah. believe how quickly that thing's kind of disintegrated there in Toronto. Well, one thing I want to say is goalies always take a while to, like, get into a new system. So – Everyone just, like, going after Mrazek, it's only been, like, 20 games, and he was hurt to start the year. It's going to take him a bit. They don't have that time, though. Yeah, I know. People are like, no, wave. Well, actually, he did get waived. But the waving, because he's playing, like, crap, so it helps wake you up. But, like, they wanted him traded for, like, a fifth. It's like, you got to give him a little bit of time here. Oh, yeah. Why? Yeah. You don't need a fifth more than you need (laughs) the chance that Mrazek wakes up and finds his old self. Yeah. Okay, so then... 
obviously um ottawa is competing for playoffs because they traded for travis Manek using a 2023 third <laughs> how tough of an out are they going to be in the playoffs kyle oh just going to be <laughs> an absolute uh force to deal with um thomas shabbat <laughs> has another elite defenseman to play with uh, it's a great time to be an ottawa senators defenseman yeah no i think we're both really confused about that one especially um because all the reports of Vancouver's locker room loving the fact that Hamannick got moved. So that one's really surprising. And it didn't seem like um, a torching a player on the end just because you can or because you want to justify your trade, like the Tyler Sagan one or the Taylor Hall one. That does seem more like um, they actually didn't like him there because he wasn't getting a lot of spots in the roster from what I remembered. He would usually be scratched. He sent the AHL. So I, I don't really get it, but what do I know? Yeah, Travis Hamannick is just a player that every time his name comes up, you're like, oh, yeah, he's still in the league. Like, he was supposed to be pretty good. <laughs> he was pretty good for a while, but then, yeah, who knows. Um, so then uh, the Wild were able to sign Jack McBain and managed to get a second um, out of him. I forget where he was drafted, but um, he might have been a second pick. So I think they recouped that pick, uh, 2022 second from Arizona, I think. I think it was one of the mid ones. I don't know, 100%. So that's good. If McBain works out, uh, he's a big center for Arizona, then that's good for them. Um, he's used to playing college hockey, so he's going to stay out of Arena. So he knows the environment. <laughs> right? I think that's the best thing to say about that trade. Not wow. much more to add. I did not, yeah. <laughs> I saw Can't that as believe. a joke on Twitter, so I stole that from someone. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am thinking you're funny. Oh no, I am funny, but just not that. Time. Well, no, that time I was, but it wasn't mine. Yeah. Um, and then Winnipeg traded another player to Arizona and Nathan Smith to get rid of Brian Little's contract, and he had a fourth back. Nathan Smith is um, a player who sort of shot up, I think, their prospect rankings. I believe he's another big center. I might have completely mixed up him and. McBain. So if people want to yell at me, go ahead. Um, it's just, again, Arizona gets some more younger players to play on their team. And Brian Little's contract to hit the cap for it. So that one's pretty simple. Nothing yeah, the, there's there. few things Arizona has done well in their time in the NHL, but I think taking on horrible contracts for for assets has been one of them. Yeah, like these last Dave two years, Bolin. they've done everything Seattle should have done when Seattle looked at their expansion draft. But they're still horrible and playing in a college arena next year. So, but I don't, I don't want to rip too much on Arizona. <laughs> True, so, they don't. Yeah, their fans have had it hard enough. Yeah. yeah, and if they just get a good team there, all the fans are going to come. Like Florida, everyone wanted to move Florida. I was like, just put something good there. No one's seen it past yeah. the first round since 1998. Like they don't have the benefit. Of people still old enough to remember 1967. Like give them a breakdown. There. Just put, yeah. get Dave Talon out, which they did, thankfully, and then bam. But yeah, so let's go on to Jacob Middleton went from San Jose for Capo Conan and a 2022 fifth. Um, I guess Bill Guerin just isn't a fan of Kakonen. I thought we thought he was a good young goalie. Um, he's been a little like but the big hype around the, uh, the deadline was also for Jacob Middleton from San Jose. I believe he was a seventh round pick from like two years ago so that's really good asset management for them but then he goes to a team that's like has Reimer and Aiden Hill and now Kakonen so they're kind of loaded up in goalies who are good to average who might be better who might not be good at all um yeah and then that also gave the wild room or maybe they had room before i don't remember how these trades came through but they got mark Ray flurry for a fun conditional trade right oh my god yeah yeah i like I was, I was telling you before i don't think i've ever seen a conditional first this it's not complicated but it's just like what a random how do they decide on this like that like the, well okay so it said if flurry wins four games in the first and second rounds and minnesota advanced to the western conference final chicago gets a first if that doesn't happen, they get a second. So was it like they were like, oh, well, if we get to the Stanley Cup final and they're like, no, 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 Western Conference final or no deal. Like, how do they arrive at this obscure condition? I don't know. But um, I think it's a fine trade for Minnesota. Like I was saying, I don't really think it takes them anywhere close to Colorado, Tampa, 
even like Boston, Florida, honestly. Um, they've been a great team. They've been overperforming. They've been well coached, well disciplined. But I don't know. I, I guess we saw Flurry take take Vegas to the Cup final in their first year. So crazier things have happened. But he's not really having a great year. So they're, they're kind of hoping he bounces back. And yeah, I'd, I'd like to see it happen. I'd like to see him, see him make a deep run. But I, I'm not sure if this is the move that puts them in that Stanley Cup favorite category. Yeah, they might win a round, I guess. They're up against, I think, St. Louis right now, and that's probably how it's going to wind come down. But then it's Huso against Flurry slash Talbot because, well, Talbot's also there. He's a fine goalie. It's a weird move because, again, I thought Minnesota would want more scoring, but they can't load up because they have $14 million committed to nothing next year. Man, what a – wow. Uh, yeah, I guess that's all we need to add for that one. Yeah, well, Fleur, I've been a Flurry fan since I was a kid as a Penguins fan, so I'm really hoping the best for him. I'm hoping he has a, some bounce back rest of his season with Minnesota. Were you sad but, he didn't go to Pittsburgh? I don't think they could have made the salary work at all, but like just as a backup or something? I'm not this year. Last year, I would I was 100% advocating to get him back because Jari was not looking that great, but Jari has been really solid. Fingers crossed. <laughs> like, oh, my God, after last year's playoffs. But um, well, I managed to I get think- – Jerry late and Jari late in all of my hockey pools, so I'm fine with. Him. Hey, yeah. that's a good pick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I I definitely I'm definitely like super like. I mean, we're at the point Pittsburgh in the cup run in, in our sorry we're at the point with this roster where like we need to go as hard as we can to win a cup every year. So when Jari had that performance in the playoffs last year, I was like immediately like get rid of him. But <laughs> now that I've had some time to think about it, like, you know, it was his first full year as a starter. He's still really young. Um, we have a really solid team around him. So I think he's starting to play with a lot more confidence. Um, I haven't seen him getting beaten high glove, low glove. Like what was it like seven times in the first two games last playoffs. So it was against yeah. the Islanders too, right? Yeah. They're, they're a tough team because you can outshoot them, but they just, work and just get like in the prime scoring areas every time and they're the most frustrating team very yeah, trying anymore yeah <laughs> well no they're still frustrating now once they got over uh, COVID and the whole moving they're like i think they've won a whole lot which is probably why they made no move that let's just save that for later anyway so zach senichin speaking of the boston 2015 draft was moved to ottawa for uh josh brown so a depth defenseman for boss player that one out who's not really done anything but requested a trade because he thinks he can do anything um is Ottawa gonna give him a chance what do you think um I don't know I I haven't heard much about him since that draft other than like bad things right that he oh he got picked too high just because he gets skater um you know we, we value skating too much nowadays blah 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 but I guess I'm just excited to see him on a line with Alex Formanton that'll be fun yeah. at least very, very is fast, like yeah. Holy. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what Senshin's upside in the NHL is anymore, um, or that this is really a move that excites me at all. That all that much for for a young Ottawa team in a rebuild. Oh, well, not in a rebuild anymore. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I said it's good to bet on yourself. We're not supposed to interrupt each other. Why do I keep doing it? My bad. <laughs> e two got mad at me last time. Yeah. Anything else to add before I cut you off, pal? Not really. I, I don't know. I, I, it's like it's just not really that. I, I don't think anything's going to happen on either side of that move. I think we're both going to forget about these players pretty quickly, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Well, Matthew Joseph could play center, so that's like the fastest line in the NHL. That'd be pretty fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 True. Yeah. If Sanation's still a good skater because, like you said, I also haven't, I don't really want to. Well, I'm sure he can still skate. Yeah. Unless but, he had like, an injury. Super fast. I don't know. We'll see. I I won't see. I won't be watching (laughs) unless Pittsburgh (laughs) plays Ottawa. All right. Well, then um, we got um, uh, Arturi Lekonen was apparently really sought after. Um, A lot of people like him. I'm fine with him. He's 26, I guess. So he's a good player. Um, I just find he's a player who he shoots a ton, but everything he does on the ice doesn't really create production for himself. So maybe that's why I don't. Look at him that high for Justin Barron, 2024 second. And Barron's probably the top prospect moved at the draft, hey? 
Yeah, off the top of my head for sure. Yeah, I, I think he's been looking a lot better. I think he was a late first. Um, I think he's already on the rise. I, I think he was um, – was he injured in his draft year? But – um, I've I've read been reading about him and, and Colorado was really high on him so we'll be upset to lose him um, but I think like it into Colorado wow like the, they're starting to look really good I, I mean starting but like I don't know yeah maybe I, they'll I, be okay <laughs> well I, I I just mean didn't they already gra- also grab someone else am I losing it yeah no they grabbed um Cogley and oh yeah that's fine that's just some depth um they got. Manson, which we talked about last one. Oh, right. I think someone else they got for depth up front. I don't remember 100%. I, don't know. I really, just think so. Lekkanen is exactly what you're looking for if you're a cup contender right now. He's a player having a uh, – I think he's having a career year offensively. Um, so, like, he, he used to be just kind of a guy that I, I was looking at uh, that I, I wanted the Penguins to get as, like, a pure defense. I mean, he's been 99, 100 percentile defense for the last three, four years, and now he's adding production to that. I think that's a – fantastic move for Colorado and um they kind of had a pretty weak bottom six going into the year like they're really 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 top heavy but uh I, I think they're starting to look a bit more balanced which is what you're going to need in the playoffs when you're coming up against teams like Tampa that can run four lines uh, at you all night uh, uh Justin Barron's also pro- he's going to help Montreal for sure he's been really good in the NHL this year like you'd already said so this just seems really solid for uh Montreal and both yeah. teams, actually this is kind of a win-win one hey it's like they didn't really overpay too much and it's not like baron was going to get a lot of chances on their blue line so move from a position of strength to get a need up front i think uh some Habs fans will probably be looking at the Hagel trade and wishing they got a bit more <laughs> but um you know before the kind of precedent was set i think they definitely would have taken this return for like and i think baron's a really solid prospect and uh he adds to a pretty good solid prospect group for montreal I think 31 fan bases wish they got the return for Hagel. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, just oh, trade I with Tampa about... these days. It's, it should have been the lesson. Yeah. Yeah, how often do you say, with, say that, hey? Like, oh, yeah, you'll flee Tampa. <laughs> Watch Hagel go and, like, score 40 next year. But yeah. I am a little surprised Colorado didn't make a little depth move on goalie because Kemper and Franco's are – quite injury prone that was my only real surprise with Colorado that's true Kemper's been playing a lot better than the start of the season so I think they're comfortable rolling in games at least I swear goalies always take a bunch of games in a new system what where if, how, where is he pulling why, where did you get the 20 20 games I, mark from I looked at a couple and it always seemed to take 20 games at least for them to get their production up but I have no data sheet to prove that I might work on it now I've got a bunch of time um, new article coming out, new ramblings. <laughs> maybe that'd be a good one. I think that would be weeks though to compile, but who knows? Good idea for later. Let's talk about the big Pittsburgh deal then. Hey, kind of a last minute one. Uh, they got Ricard Rell past 30 goal scorer um, for Zach Aston Reese, Dominic Simone, a 2022 second, and Callie Klang. What do you think about this deal? Well, um, a, Ra- 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 Raquel was the name I was looking at. I mean, obviously, he hasn't proven to be the player. Like, I think he's, what, three, four seasons removed from back-to-back 30-goal seasons. Um, but uh, I think you put him next to Malkin, and, and he could at least find somewhat of a shadow, of his, somewhat of his former play. Um, I was hoping we would make a big splash and go for someone like JT Miller and really just try to win a cup, like extend their cup window. But... Raquel, I'm happy with. Um, as I was telling you before, the return is something I'm not so happy with. Um, like I said, with Tampa, as a Penguins fan, I'm totally in the in the zone where it's just like just trying to win the cup. It's not a really big deal if you overpay, um, because you know I am fully prepared in, in five six years that we're just going to be last place for three years in a row and and, and pick Malkin and Crosby and Flurry again, um, but. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I really don't. They, so going into the year, they they got Brock McGinn to replace Tanev, and they set up the line with Zach Essen Reese and Teddy Bluger, and it's like w- one of our two lines that we're comfortable with, right? With the Crosby Rust Gensel line. So going into the trade deadline, I really thought they would try to solidify those two middle six lines and and add a winger or two, but they traded Essen Reese, so now it's like they kind of have to find someone to fit on that defensive line, which I it's not going to be Ricard Raquel, so. Um, 
yeah, kind of an interesting return, but I don't know. Maybe Anaheim's really high on Aston Reese. I, I know I am. I think he's a terrific defensive player. Um, Dominic Simone, I'm not too worried about either of the picks, but I was, uh, I was kind of a little, I don't know how I feel about losing Klang. Um, you know, I don't know if he really had a future in Pittsburgh, but I don't think this was like, I think we could have waited a bit longer till his, till his, we could trade him for more because I think he's been on a terrific trajectory ever since we picked him his first year. He was nuts uh, in the all Svenski. And I think he helped his team prevent from getting prevented from being relegated. And this year he's had really solid numbers as a 20 year old in the SHL. So yeah, I, I'm definitely pretty upset about losing Clang. I think he was honestly like one of our top prospects, like above Blumquist um, and Lindbergh, our other top goalies. But at the end of the day, uh, I am happy that we added more scoring to our middle six because we really, really needed it. I think Rodriguez, Kapanen, and all these guys have had like a combined like uh, five goals since Crosby and Malkin have both been healthy back. So, yeah, it's pretty solid, although it, it could very well like if Raquel goes through another cold streak, then we just have how many wingers on pretty high deals that aren't producing. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that he does, but this trade could look a little iffy. Yeah, I, I hope Raquel, like you said, meshes with Malkin because then I could get him back up to 30. I think he's sort of a player for him. I don't really know. Malkin seems to want different versions of player, but he's kind of like Kessel in that he loves to shoot from anywhere. So that might help. Um, and I think... Pittsburgh signing uh, Lindbergh in the offseason like they did sort of made an extra goalie expendable, especially with Jari playing so well. Um, I quite like Lindbergh, so I thought that that was a really good signing for them. And then they long-term, they still have Blomqvist. So Pittsburgh always seems to, like, the one prospect pipeline that's always full for Pittsburgh is they always seem to have really good goaltending prospects just in there. So, like I said, they're moving from a position of strength, so might as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like Blomquist could still very well be and be end up being better than Clang, and goalies are so hard to predict, so it's not that bad. But I don't know. I, I just have like a soft spot for Clang, given how quickly he's become a fan favorite in Pittsburgh with how crazy he's been in, over in Sweden. He's also been in a he was in a Head and Shoulders ad with Henrik Lundqvist. Do you see that? Yeah, oh. like a couple of years ago. So, oh, well, lucky guy, hey? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and now he gets to try to usurp uh, Lucas Dostal in Anaheim when he's there. So that'll be fun after Gibson goes or, or stays. Who knows with that? But we're going to move on to the next trade, which was um, Morgan Barron and two conditional seconds heading to Winnipeg for Andrew Pop and some other stuff. Um, so the conditional seconds on this one, Kyle, were um, one of the second round picks can turn into a first. Um, I don't know which one because it doesn't specify. Probably the 2022 one um, can turn into a first if the Rangers win two rounds in the playoffs, which um, Shesterkin can easily bring them to. Sorry, because you guys might have to play them again. Um, well, yeah. And Cop has to play 50% of the playoff games. And the other second round pick is Winnipeg's option in 2022 or 2023. So yeah, yeah. It's just a depth move for the Rangers. They need scoring, but they keep grabbing depth two-way guys. But these depth two-way guys are guys who can pot goals, like Petrano and Cop and the other person they got, which I forget who it was. Oh, Tyler yeah. Mott. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they solidified their defense, but they still have a system that is an odd one and allows more shots against than shots for but they have a great power play and a top bully. So it's a pretty, pretty solid move. Like we talked about last episode, um, clearly they're, they're leaning towards the, the Panarins um, and the Shesterkins of their rebuild. And, or, and they're not like, well, sorry, they're not really trying to rebuild anymore or, or like get anything like prospects and in, in young picks. So I think it's a pretty solid move. Cops, a solid player, um, like solid secondary scoring. So it's pretty good, but like I don't think it'll have a big impact in the league this year in terms of like I don't think New York's going to go too far. Uh, the goal as far as only takes him basically. Yeah, absolutely. If he has like three 100%. bad games, actually he probably has to have four bad games for them to go out or four average games. Yeah. If he just plays like he always does, then they're going to be you're going to have to win games like two one. So. Yeah. But like we said for playoffs, 
penalties don't really happen. So that's why I think the Rangers are going to have a tough time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, they've had trouble producing a five on five this season. Okay, and then we have the really confusing Carolina, Columbus, Florida trade ever. So we're not going to get into everything, but Domi went to Carolina and Carolina now has Domi and D'Angelo. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, and Aiden Hereschuk went to Columbus. Uh, you know more about him than I do. Yeah, I, I was going to say, like, I think this is a good move, good change of scenery for Domi. Um, unfortunately, thus far in his career, he's kind of, this isn't the first time that's been said, you know, a change of scenery will help him. I think it certainly did in Montreal, I, I, and I don't think it helped playing under torts. Um, I think him and Line were both, they, they don't really, they're not players that like to defend, so I don't think that was helpful for them. Um, so I really hope he does thrive uh, in Carolina as a former fan. Like, I used to watch him in London growing up. Um but I, I think this is also solid for Columbus. They get harassed, check. They add to a very deep prospect pool. Um, and I think in a couple of years' time, Columbus is going to be right back uh, to where they were, especially with how good Line is playing. So, yeah. I, mean, I don't know how, why Florida decided to get in on this salary. Uh, I think they I get think an extra was. pick. Yeah, they got a yeah. sixth round pick in there just to hold 25%. So why not just get an extra asset? That's all it really is. Um, yeah, uh, I agree. I, I don't know. I don't um, know. I've never really liked Domi in the NHL. He has one big year in Montreal, and everyone seems to think he can keep doing that. But he really just posts um, around anywhere from like 40 to 50 points and like 10 goals. So I think he gets overrated a lot. He also loves to just take 10 minute fighting or like just fight anyone for like no reason and always takes himself out of the game. So I'm always really confused about that. But I mean, he could help in the great area for Carolina. And he's a really good playmaker. So I can't I can't say anything bad about his playmaking. Especially like you said, watching him in London, some of the stuff he would do was just nuts out there. I think one of my favorite goals was the empty net one he scored. Do you remember yeah. that? He like tossed it oh, to yeah. himself and batted it in. That I was there. Yeah. Goals. Yeah. Yeah. Um I, I, I hope. Yeah, with with the whole dirty side of Domi, like so he in his third in his fourth year, I think he played for Arizona a bit and they they sent him back. No one really thought he was coming back because he was too good for the OHL, but they sent him back. They gave him the C in London, and I swear, my dad and I both used to have season ticket holders. We were saying, like, Domi's been so much more responsible this year. He's not getting into fights. He's not taking dumb penalties. And then it kind of it lasted a bit in the, in the NHL, and now he's just known, like you mentioned, him in the same breath as D'Angelo. So what, what I'm hoping is that if you get him in a team where he's doing well and he's not getting frustrated and, you know, like they're – they're, they're in games to the end, then hopefully that keeps them out of the penalty box and we can see the best of Max Domi because I do think um, he's got, he's not, he's definitely past the point where we can talk about potential, but Domi at his best is still a very entertaining player to watch. So I'm hoping he finds the scoring touch again in, in Carolina. And then also because it's Carolina, they got um, Tyler Inamoto. I don't really know who that is. He's a sort of a depth defenseman in the NCAA. And I'm just like, well, if Carolina got him, they either see something there and this guy's all of a sudden going to be like at, at the very least a top AHL defenseman who they'll flip for something later or it's just a contract they had to take. So it could be either of that. That was just mm-hmm. a little tidbit. I was like, who is this person? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Carol- I like Carolina's got a good scouting department. So he could yeah. be good. they kind of, they really have because they don't spend a lot for their management. Um, but I mean, that's also the the owner is like this is his set price so it's hard to disagree with him um yeah and then since no one still knows what's going on bad enough i don't think we really need to touch on that other than like yeah who knows that can be in the winners or losers area <laughs> so uh go for um let's start with so with winners and losers uh do you want to start with winners or losers i think we just start with because those are the easiest ones hey eh? and losers you can have way more fun with yeah. So let's start with winners. Um, I'll, I'll go first. Uh, sure. Okay. My first winner is basically uh, Florida Stanley Cup hopes because I think the moves they made really helped them there. And Ekblad definitely needs to come back because you don't want to give Sherratt all those minutes. But, <laughs> like up front, they are very good. And that's just all I really have to say with that one. Like the winners is such an easy like pew, pew, pew. Yeah. 
Hmm. Oh wait, I got more winners. I guess I can go through the list too. Pittsburgh, sure. I really like their Raquel, um, the Raquel acquisition. I was like, that's great. It was so under the radar. But then when I put it down, I was like, oh, but they did lose Aston Reese, who I think is really underrated defensively and really good to hold down the lead that you need. But Pittsburgh also seems to, I don't know why, extra help scoring. So it just it just seems like it. And it makes no sense because their top line's nuts, but it's like Ever since Kessel left, no one's really been able to gel with Gino that much. So, yeah, it's, it's Rodriguez one. or Raquel to hop in there. Yeah, yeah. Let me finish first. <laughs> I was agreeing with you. I, I know you're not allowed. You have to wait till after. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and then another win I had was all the people that wanted trades and drama because, like, I think all the trades were happening before, and then on a deadline, we're like, nothing's going to happen, and then there was so many trades. So. And then Kyle Dubas to fight um, the guy from Chicago, I think. Jer- no, Fitzgerald is New Jersey. What? Is it Davidson? Davidson, yes. They want to fight, so Brian Burke's going to rent them a barn. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just like that there's drama and everything and not the hang-up drama of the NHL looking incompetent, but that's a little um, uh, spoiler for my loser section. I think purely in terms of value added and not in terms of like, I think Colorado is a winner. I think you, you, you could say that they're a loser because they didn't get Giroud. But if you look purely at value added versus value lost, I think they're looking really good. Uh, I mean, obviously, Lekkanen is uh, I think projected for like, you know, one and a half, two wins uh, or we yeah, have wins bro placement. Um, and and then the similar kind of thing with Toronto, I would say. I really like that Giordano and Blackwell deal, but you could say that they're a loser given that I think some of their fan base might have been advocating to pick up um, more goaltending. Um, but I really like the Blackwell and part of that trade in particular. And I think uh, Giordano, although he's not what's, what he once was offensively, I think is at least um, – not solid, not solid at creating offense, but at just being part of the cycle. And then also he's having a terrific year defensively. And I think he still brings that, def- uh, what they've been missing with Muzzin out, I think it'll definitely help. So I'd, I'd probably go with those for my, my, my two winners. I mean, I, mean I'll, I think I'll go Florida too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they got the oh. best player available. And I don't think they gave up too much. I, like, I think they'll be fine with giving up Tippett given the amount of forward depth they have. Yeah, <laughs> just and they got like six prospects that are knocking on the door too, but they could put in there like Denisenko could come up. But yeah, I, I think I kind of forgot about Colorado just because at the same time I don't really think they needed to add anything, and they still did anyway, and the ads were good. So I guess I gotta say Colorado's a win. And then, and I feel like a lot of the wins too are like wins slash losses because like you said with Toronto, like they address depth that defense and forward but they didn't address goaltending so for one of those i got boston like they got much better on defense with Lindholm, but like they still don't have a number two center and depth scoring has been their issue for like three years even though they got taylor hall but they still don't have like other scoring outside of the top line but thankfully the pasternak hall line on line two is actually working a bit but for me like they need a they needed to get like a two c and that's still just they don't have it so they better hope Paula and coil can just be really really good three c's yeah i think they, they i thought i really thought they'd be in on eichel i thought that was a perfect fit the boston college on this and then uh, this time around i thought they were going to be looking at hurdle and he signed so <laughs> again yeah i don't know if it's like really a loser because for all we know hurdle re- did really want to sign and bought jack eichel had no interest in boston so but yeah, I think I think they would look a lot better if they picked up a solid TC. I don't um, think Buffalo would want to trade with Boston too. You know, whenever they're in the same division, they always rack up the like amount of the price too, right? But if you can get two, you can give two first for a Hagel. Why wouldn't you give two first for Hagel? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> moving into losers, uh, who do you have for losers? Um, I think uh, where'd my where'd my list go? Or what situations do you have for losers? Because I have like a whole a whole bunch. I have a fun list. Well, uh, probably Ottawa for giving <laughs> getting Hamnick for no reason, um, and torturing Thomas Shabbat further. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, at least he's out for the rest of the year, though. Hamnick or Shabbat? Shabbat. Shabbat's out for the rest of the year. I didn't see that. 
Sorry? I said you really don't watch Ottawa. Eh? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> like, they're bad. <laughs> they're still Boy. entertaining. You're going to get auto fans all up in oh, your yeah. mentions. Like, that Jack Maxwell account is going to be all for you. Um, no, I, I, yeah, he's out for this year, I think, with hand surgery, which screws up head to head leak, but whatever. Oh, sorry. Keep going, losers. Or. Yeah. I'm just thinking, yeah. Do you want me to list uh, off a couple yeah, of Yeah, go, go ahead, okay. go ahead. Uh, Tampa Bay overpaying for Hagel because I don't understand why you would give up that much. I mean, he is 23. And then all of a sudden, no one wanted to pay that much for Chikrin. Like, he's signed for 4.6, and I was like, no, that's too much. Why would you give that up for Chikrin? Let's, let us give you a third and a first and this prospect we don't care about. So, yeah, I'm good. I, it's a good thing Arizona held on to Chikrin, but... That was a big overpay from Tampa. I didn't get that one. Um, and then I agree with you, Ottawa making no sense is actually what I wrote down for a loser because they decided to get Hamannick and give up a third. And then Nick, they didn't want to give an extra 500000 to Nick Paul, who I think all the teammates like, so they just shipped him off. But then they kind of won that trade because I like Matthew Joseph more. But I don't know, Ottawa just confuses me because the second someone wants more money, it's like, poop, get out. Yeah, um, yet they gave Colin White six and a half mil. <laughs> uh, a big, a big loss for me uh, is this whole NHL Central Registry thing that was going on. Yeah, uh, they, well, yeah I remember fair seeing enough. on Twitter when it was like, "There's 33 trades still. You have to be processed," and it's like 1:30 Eastern, and I was like, "What?" And then the guy was like, "Oh, 24 have already been done." And I was like, "How are there still like nine left?" But yeah, apparently. They cut the budget, I guess, to there, and no one knows really what they're doing. So everyone had to wait an extra four hours, five hours, eight hours. This whole dad and off thing isn't fixed, and that kind of goes with the central registry. Like, did Vegas not read the contract they got from Ottawa? Did Ottawa just, like, white out that part in the contract? Do NHL teams, when they trade, just tell each other what's in the trade and the contract? And the GMs just go, okay, I'll remember this forever. Like, it's so confusing. Like, did Ottawa just go, just not disclose it? So confused on that. But, like, a trade came through at the very end. Like, Nelson, I don't even know how to say that, for Marcus Phillips. Like, it was just such a depth move. But, like, did that come out basically at, like, 2 a.m. this morning, Eastern? I'm just, I don't understand that. So, it makes the NHL really um, Mickey Mouse. Fair enough. Well, yeah, it's been a tough year for them, but yeah, this is cherry on top. Any any extra losers, Cal? Or I don't know. I, I'm looking at it, and there's no one that's like really made an awful move, like other than the ones we mentioned. Well, I was a little upset that the Devils didn't move anyone out. Like they got Hammond to hopefully put Dawes back in the AHL because he doesn't need to keep getting lit up in the NHL. Um, he think... definitely needs more AHL time. So, but like um. I wasn't expecting a Zaka move. I'd be a little upset with a Zaka move, but like he doesn't really fit the center position. Um, but I would mostly wanted Vessi to be traded because Lindy Ruff puts Vessi in every spot he can. Um, I love Severson, so I'm glad he's not traded. So that's good. But then at the same time, Severson's still on the first power play, even though Hamilton's back. So it's just a monumental frustration. It's like, I kind of wanted them to trade Severson just so they could put Hamilton back. But then I was like, no. That's I'm... a joke. The, the Devils are the most confusing team. It's like, oh, our power play worked for like 10 games with Brat, Hughes, Heischer, like obviously the main three. And then Hamilton was out, so Severson's there. He's good enough. Bastain's still on there too. So they have just... They're, I don't know. They they won't change the power play now because it worked for like 10 games despite it not working for a season and a half. Um, I think um, us as fans are kind of losers because um, Arizona and New Jersey did not trade Kessel and Subban of, to see them in the playoffs, but that's just a personal thing. I really wanted Subban to get another chance at a cup and Kessel, I wanted basically Kessel just to have like a crazy scoring Free in the playoffs and people to be like, oh yeah, Kessel's awesome. And then I think I, I agree. Yeah, I with the fans. I was just gonna say because then also Hurdle didn't get moved, and I think seeing Thomas Hurdle in a new shirt in the playoffs <laughs> with the season he's having would have been great. But now we just get to see him in San Jose be okay and maybe make the playoffs soon. Yeah. Who knows? At least he'll be better than San or Seattle. 
Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, man, San Jose just got so many bad backs from defense, and I'm a Carlson fan. But like Vlasic, it's just he doesn't play half the time, and he's so bad now. And yeah, don't say that to him. Olympic gold else. medal winner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, oh, another, I think, big loss is the Islanders not doing anything. Like, that was really confusing. They extended Clutterbuck for two years and Parise. And then apparently Lou Lamorell is going to give more of a shot to young players in the future. So I'm guessing that future is going to be like 2030, maybe. Yeah. Maybe Wallstrom <laughs> will finally get a chance to show what he can do or Bellows or Dobson's kind of forcing his way on there. Yeah, he has a really good year, yeah, finally. Yeah, that, that, that was all of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really surprised the Islanders didn't do anything. Like Chara? Like, I guess I wanted to. Yeah. Too. I should throw him up to the fans one because, like, Chara should have been moved. Like, no team really wanted to throw anything for Chara. Come on. I don't Even know. Even Andy Green. Like, those are two good devils. Lou just like, no. <laughs> Hang up the phone. No, he wants the dressing room, guys, man. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get that. It's like we want to see Chara and Subban and Kessel, even though Kessel has two cups. But I don't know. I would have loved to see Kessel play again for one, even if it was Pittsburgh. Like, imagine if Pittsburgh just got Kessel back. I yeah, know Kessel I was hoping for it. Defense, but like he's. I don't know. I just love Kessel. What? Uh, follow us on Twitter. Um, I'll post it down here so. We can say them if you want. Uh, you're Kyle. Underscore. Kyle underscore NW. Yeah. Uh, and you're T Quinn. Um, yeah, that's all. Okay, bye, everybody. Uh, and, e- to go. and E2 is uh, at Sultan and E2. <laughs> Notable tweeter. Yeah, send him lots of tweets. All right. He's on fire lately. Absolutely Definitely. great tweet about Samuel Hellenius. I like this. All right. Are, are you going to let us go, Kyle? Because you're the one who wants to go. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't okay. know if you were going to do like a final like goodbye okay well, so that I was kind of a goodbye this this whole outro has been a whole goodbye people are gonna love us they're gonna be like, this is why we tune in <laughs> okay i really have to go to the bathroom and